Hey guys, Thomas from Team Sakurasso here. Come here guys with another Yu-Gi-Oh! Mark Watch. And we have some crazy buyouts to go over, as well as some Edison cards to go over. Before I get into it, if you guys could smash that like button and subscribe, that would be great. I know I have some new people from Roxon's channel. Awesome yu gi tuber by the way. Go check him out. Uh, thank you for the shout-out, by the way, my man. Uh, welcome if you're from his audience. Uh, thank you for coming and thank you for subbing and being along for the ride. If you guys are buying any cards off TCG Player, please use my affiliate link down in the description below. Helps out the channel to no additional cost to you. As well as thank you to all my YouTube channel members. Uh, thank you for supporting the channel and you guys could consider being a YouTube channel member. As well as if you want me to go over any cards or you want me to alert me of any buyouts, please let me know in the comment section below. I love it when you guys give me cards to go over. Usually there's a pinned comment asking uh, what I'm going over the next market watch anyway, so try to leave it there, but I usually read through all the comments, so we're going to get right into this. So Gladiator Beast Ritari, one of the prime examples of how the Yu-Gi-Oh! community ceases to amaze me, and that is not in a positive way, that is in a negative way, because right now, rares are 145 for light play, 150, going up to 164 here, and this card does not sell for about over $10, right? We have 1055 for a light play here. 10 for near mints, six uh six dollars for near mints here. Lightly played for about five, six here. If you scroll a little lower, you can find some cheaper list uh buys as well. Uh this card definitely needs a reprint since it's only printing outside of Crossroads of Chaos. Was Turbo Pack Booster 3? Uh nobody's paying this price, don't get me wrong here. But what irks me is that the secret from Crossroads of Chaos, a set that is not only old but a fan favorite. Also, this set does not have first edition boxes, so first editions are uh, more rare to come across. You have lightly plates here for about 20 bucks here. Okay, not bad. Near mid's going up for about 24, 25 here. Uh, it is going up very quickly, but first editions are light plays are 62, 65, 69, basically 60 to 70 dollars. Why would you not grab two first edition light plays from a set that ha its first sets are very scarce? Than a rare. Now, I, I don't get me wrong. Nobody's buying this. I understand that. If it is, it's for a tax write-off of some kind. But we're not going to get to conspiracy theories here. Uh, yeah, if you have this, just list. don't list it for something this outrageous. But I would most likely sell these because you're going to get a ridiculous amount. Uh, even if you list it for like 40 bucks. Herald of Green Light Ultimate Rare. This is a lot of people are trying to find replacements for Orange Light here. And this card is the best way because instead of a monster, you negate the activation of an opponent's magic card. Wow, it actually says magic card. That's cute. Spell card and destroy it. Uh, and it can only be used in the opponent's turn. Uh, right now, these are 72. 72 going up to 100. For first edition near mints, will this be like Herald of the Orange Light going up to 150? It just all depends if it's seen play. But if you got these when they were cheap, I actually told people, you know, 20 25 dollars isn't too bad for first edition LP. So if you did grab them, well, you tripled your money. So good job here. Uh, then you got the structure deck Herald of the Green Lights here, which by the way, the Wave of Light commons are very, very clean and sick. Like, I actually really like them. Uh, as you see here, very, very low, very, very low. And then a huge spike over here with a bunch of people buying it in the last uh, days. And you have a lot of three ofs here as well. You got 40 right here. Uh, right now, let's see, for near mints, uh, you don't have too many. You have, you know, basically two and a half dollars going up to threes here. You put light plays on. You got, you know, one here for about $1.50. You know, a lot of these are, it's all the shipping. That's... That's where the main money is coming from here for your green lights here. Uh, Herald of Orange Light. Uh, it's a one of but it's still not a bad card to run. Uh, right now, these are about 89 for light play. Near mints are about 92. Honestly, I'm happy to see them so low. I kind of hated what these were at. I remember when this card was a $7 ultimate rare. Uh, absolutely crazy. Uh, Sprite Blue, Power of the Elements here. These are about $38.39, going up to $40 over here for your Sprite Blues. Uh, number 89, Diabolus the Mind Hacker here from Brothers of Legend. Uh, we're having a lot of buyouts for the level 7s here that I want to go over. Uh, Secret Rares here about $4. We go to Near Mints, about $85 here. Uh, this card will be going up uh, over time because a lot of people are looking forward to playing... Uh, Shot trees over here, uh, you know, stuff with Fenrir and all of that. Sprite Blue from Power of the Elements. 
Uh, Power of Elements is getting an unlimited box rerun as well. Uh, I know there's a rumor that there will be Starlights in the unlimited. I am 99% sure that there isn't because when we did have unlimited box runs as well as special editions, uh, those did not have Starlight rares. Uh, near mints are about $38. However, with the unlimited coming around, we can see first sets maybe drop even further to about 30. Unlimiteds could be 20 to 25. So Sprite is still a great deck. Don't get me wrong. It's just it does if it's a tier zero format, it doesn't matter how good you are, even if you're second place, you're still not the best deck in the format. Now, number 89, Diabolos, the Mind Hacker. We're having a lot of uh Shotri Law buyouts i know i mispronounced that quite a bit here but i told people that this is one of the best cards to get at one to two dollars right now near mints are four bucks here uh you know with shipping they're basically gonna run you about five here uh for about five and a half here but they quickly go up to about six dollars you know we do have some walls people have been hoarding this so with brothers of legend like you see a wall here for 76 as well with people knowing how good this card is as well as i know some of the people in the comment section, do listen to me. Uh, and I know a lot of you have made a lot of money. Like, I remember one guy said he made 1k off getting ulti strikers when I said. So, that's awesome. This card, it will continue to go up. I mean, people are buying so many copies that it's not even funny here. I think people are done bulk buying this card. And, and never mind, never mind. I got proven wrong in one minute. Um, 548 there. Okay. Well, a lot of people bought bulk back in the day. Some people are trying to even offload them now. Because if you got things at a dollar, right? When it comes to penny stocks, a lot of people think that they're going to be, you know, rich overnight, essentially. Where they're like, oh, wow, they're going to go up to $20, $25. I got them for a dollar. I bought 100 bro. Wow, that's, I'm going to have like $2,500. You're probably, it's probably, this card's not going to be $25, all right? I could be wrong. Obviously, if I am, you just went harder. Good job. But with penny stonks, the usual rule is if you get them at a dollar, you know, or less, or like a dollar fifty, say two dollars. If you got them for a dollar, let's just say for this card, uh, and they're about four and a half dollars going to five, and you have a bunch, you could start offloading a few slowly and making some of your money back. You know, you put a place it up for four bucks, right? Uh, that's kind of how it works. But I can see this card going up to about I said eight to ten dollars. I'm still gonna stick there. Uh, for right now, because a lot of people are hoarding these, so I think a lot of people are going to be able to replace these as well. Uh, number 89 from the uh, champion, you have one here, well, for 2500 You have a BGS 9.5. I actually kind of like how this person, even though it's not PSA, did grade uh, their prize card, because I don't like how they uh, they wrote their name on it, though. I, I don't like that at all. But... At least if you're paying, say, $2,900 for a prize card, it's graded, right? Which I, I really like here. $3,300 going up to $8,000. You know, I do wish I got a Minerva. Um, and there's one prize card, if I ever get, I'll make a video, I will purchase on the spot. Uh, the Ascended of Thunder, Code of the Duelist here. A lot of people talked about this with the deck because it's a level 7. You just special it by paying $3,000. And if it is destroyed by an opponent's card... Uh, you gained 5,000. It's funny because this actually isn't a bad card because it's a free special summon of a card. You just have to pay 3,000. But it being level 7 means you could, uh, you know, XYZ into Draco Sack, Big Eye. I know I'm thinking Dragon Roll format. Or, ya yeah boy, number 89 here. Well, commons right now are about 4 bucks. First, that's going up to 5 here. And this card's officially being about $5.00. Common. I told people when it was like four or five bucks, I'm like, this probably is hyped up, but it's still gonna. I think it's gonna see some play. I saw it drop to about a dollar or two. I said, that's actually pretty good if you want to get for a dollar or two, it does not hurt. Now it's back up to four or five dollars. Now, mega packs though, a little bit of a different story. Uh, you got two here for five, nine, and then ten bucks here. I mean, at least you have a place if you choose to get this one, but yeah, mega packs completely buy, and you could even see here they were. They were quite cheap here. So if you guys have bulk, especially uh, Code of the Duelist bulk, because there was a lot of this set, number one. Stores still have this set to this day, by the way. This this set was not that great. I kind of want to see how bad uh, these are. This is a short print card because people might actually be prompted to open up Code of the Duelist, which I find quite funny because I actually want to see. Yeah, yeah, boxes for like 85 here. Uh, yeah, yeah, this, this set is just awful uh just awful that's all i have to say this comment's worth 60 cents i don't know why but someone could explain that to me here 
Uh, then you have Fenrir here from Darkwing Blast. This card is going up to about a $70 card, 72 For your Fenrirs here, I mean, Darkwing Blast, Ultra. Imagine if they made this a secret. Uh, Unicorn here, something I told people to get at $7 to $10 here. I said if uh, Fenrir could be uh, 45 to 60 this card could easily hit 15 to 25 Well, $25 it is for your Unicorns. Uh, then you have Exodia, the Forbidden One, Starlight Rare. Now, this was actually bought out, and people told me on the last Market Watch. And I know that one of the Starlight Rares are going to get bought out. Did I put it on the Exodia head? No, I honestly thought it was going to be one of the good generic cards. But right now, Secrets are 543, going up to 1600. Now, you do have a full set here uh, for 1800. I know people bought their full sets for 900,000. If you did, looks like you made a really great choice. I didn't think it was too bad, 900, but I just saw the limbs getting cheaper to 100 a piece, right? So I said, you know, if you get for try and get for a little less if you could. But if you did wait, unfortunately, uh, I guess that was the bad call. I still think this is going to repopulate, however, and go down. The limbs also going back up to 200, 200, 180, and then about 166, 167, go up to 176 here for your limbs here. Um, I think these are going to populate the market. I think a lot of people just, uh, you know, want to either take off their listings because it was too cheap or it was going to get too cheap and they didn't want to populate the market or, you know, people organized and said, you know what, we can inflate this. Let's do it. 150, 113. Plus if people do commit to getting one or two limbs, they're going to commit to getting the whole set. So the set does have that going for it to counter the person who pulls one random limb let's say right leg they think it's cool but they'd rather have anything else because there's nothing you can do with one right leg uh 150 uh if i ever get a set of exodia i will make an exodia deck profile of starlights by the way i i will do that i will play with them uh armor master i said would drop to 100 it which it should yano is dropping to 140 now it's about 150 so looks like i was about 10 to 20 dollars off of this starlight not too bad essentially uh, and then, yeah, then you just have access and Black Cluster Soldier here at $9. Selene's at 8 I mean, this set is definitely populating, I'll tell you that. Uh, Clockwork Tower going up from the about two and a half, three dollar $3 mark to about 4 Uh Chaos Spaces, pretty good to get overall, but I want to see if they could drop a little bit. Fusion Destiny's at about 263 240 right here. So, very good set overall if you want to go in on this, honestly. Uh, then we have Phantom Knights, uh, Phantom Knights of Ancient Cloak here from, uh, Relentless Revenge here. This is the highest rarity, $2 here going up to about threes over here. This card used to be $8 to $14 when D-Link was not in the format because unless it's a tier zero format, Phantom Knights are good enough to play. It's just they lose very hard against certain decks like Dragon Link. Uh, Silent Boots here, Secret Rares, $2. They keep telling people... I would, it's not like I didn't invest crazy in Phantom Knights, but I would I would get it uh your uh, copies of Silent Boots, your copies of Ancient Cloak. Very, very good penny stocks, honestly. If you want to go for that. Torn scales here on uh, near mints are about 66 less things. You got three bucks here, 350 going up to about four dollars. I told people to get this to about two and a half, three dollars here. And while this is three dollars right now and Overpopulating. It did have a spike when I didn't mention it, going up to five sixes here. And people are buying these secret herbs. I think a lot of people who want to play Phantom Knights are looking at the secret herbs more than the reprint ultras with how cheap this is. I think if Phantom Knights ever get announced a card, they'll go absolutely bonkers. Now, Starlight Rare torn scales here. These are about 120, 128. Not too bad for a Starlight Rare, if I say so myself. Uh, in fact, there's one other starter I just want to check up on very quickly. I want to just see if Baron Blossom. No, Baron Blossom's still here. Okay, well, quickly going up to about 400 here. I don't know if people would pay 400 for this Starlight Rare, but hey, if you want this, last chance at 180. That's all I'm going to tell you. Uh, Phantom Knights of Shade Brigade, premium gold here. Uh, these are about $6 here. In fact, if we go near mints here, they're about $6 going up to about 9 Dollars. I told people to get this at about four or five bucks because if you guys do not know, you're not getting this for being a Phantom Knight card. You are getting this card for Trap Tricks because if you go first with Trap Tricks, which is the goal of the deck, 
you will you are able to activate this card since you have no traps in the grave. You send the activate, and then you get Sarah's effect because you activate a trap that turn, which is crucial. But this card also puts a level four on board, which means that your other trap tricks, which you're going to be able to get special uh, from activating this card through Sarah's effect, is really really good because what you're able to do is make Time Thief for Doer or Trap Tricks for Aflasia over here. So if you want to do a, like a little combo and you want to play through Nib, you could do that. Not that a lot of people are playing Nib Hero right now, but it will come back in the format. But you can put this on with and make, you know, you have Grave Digger's Trap Hole in the deck and you're able to negate. So six, this is going up. I still think it's going to go a little higher. Uh, if the deck does not have a copy of this, expect even the commons to go up. Now, Rafflesia, OTS 13 here. Uh, ultis are still about 38, 39. I think that's pretty fair for an ulti. It's not, if, you're, if you want to play Trap Tricks and you want a little bling, I actually don't think an ulti for 40 is, not too, is too bad. Especially because this ulti does look good. With the, with the newer foiling, I do like this card with the newer foiling. I would not like it with the older foiling. And I almost never say that because I always prefer old school foiling uh, when it comes to ultimate rares. But Rafflesia, it just, it looks very good with the bright foilings. Even the picture looks good. Uh, Trap Trick Sarah here, Secret Rares, these are about $18 here, um, these never really, this, these just did not drop with the reprint, uh, you want the reprint, they're like 50 cents though, Secrets do look gorgeous though. Zodiac Whiptail here, uh, ultis are about 28s, 30s, 32 over here, some people actually want to play Zodiac with 3 macro, 3 D fissure, and just go off, 35 over here, especially because, while macro hurts them, if you're going to Zeus Turbo, uh, it doesn't really, frankly, matter too much. It's like a what? It's like a, a D fissure just for your opponent, right? And maybe your standby phase, essentially, before you blow it up with Zeus. Uh, Tiger Mortar here from Raging Tempest. Uh, dollars here, I think this is actually very good. In fact, if we go near Mints here, uh, 73. If you go First Editions, 40 listings. So always play around a little bit with filters because sometimes the card will seem like it's very populated and... It's not really the case here. I mean, you just saved off 70% of uh, filters over here because most people will want a first edition near mint. Uh, better than the gold rare, I believe this has. Uh, no, it just has the mega pack. Okay. Uh, for not even a dollar. That's not too bad. Chaka 9 here. Uh, this card was quite expensive uh, until the gold reprint here. About 215 here, first editions. In fact, let's do the old filter trick here. Uh, 19 listings, 250 going up to 4 and a half dollars here for your Chaka Nines. Uh, Zodiac Barrage here, Raging Tempest. Here, I actually have a misprint of these. I'm probably going to show you guys in the next video if I remember. Uh, first editions are about $1.60, three and a half here, four dollars. People think this is a card that could come off the ban list. I personally don't want Zoo to do anything. They can stay there. Uh, you guys know how much I hate this archetype, but hey, for a banned card, this could go back up to eights if it ever comes back. Uh, Zodiac Dryden's here. OGs are about about four and a half, going up to like five, seven bucks here. That's actually quite nuts uh, for a Dryden. In fact, Mega Packs, uh, these are about a dollar two. So that's, you do have the gold here. And the gold does not look awful, actually. I, I know, I kind of like the gold. Don't don't execute me on that. But dollar over here for your Drydens here. Ram Ram Supers, dollars here. Uh, then you have the Throat Blade, this Bob Bob Buck here, and then you have your Broad Bulls here for about, let's see, first edition near mints are about $3.50, $4, going up to sixes here. Uh, a lot of people, I think, might want to just play, like, playing the Zoom Mirror. That's why these cards are going up. Maybe people think that they're going to go up because of Bandless Hype. I just highly doubt it, uh, personally, but it's probably one of those two reasons, if not both. Uh, Glider Beast, Beast Ciari here from Champion Pack 7 here. Uh, lightly plays are 120. Near Mints are, I believe they're like 200, right? Yeah, 371. Honestly, I think that's really ridiculous. I would much rather have three lightly plays uh, instead of a Near Mint here. Near One Near Mint is, uh, let's see here. Yeah, one Near Mint is more expensive than three lightly plays. And imagine if you order this Near Mint and you get it closer to LP. I would just feel so distraught. It would be ridiculous to buy any of these near mints when there's lightly plates here. So if you have a near mint, you can move it for a near the near mint price. Instantly do it and just replace yourself with two lightly plates. It's it's like a free money. It's like activating multiply 
on your expensive cards. Wonderful. Uh, in fact, this has a secret, don't it? Yeah, I actually think a lot of players do like the secret or two. I personally did three and a half here. Uh, near mentor about five. First edition's about six. That's pretty good here. Also, if you guys love me going over Edison cards, you guys like these mark watches. Can we get to a hundred likes on this video? Um, lately the algorithm slash holidays have not been treating the views as well. We did hit 3,400 subs though. So that's really awesome because the goal is 3,500 subs by the end of the year. So I think we're about 94 off. So we have a few days of leeway before we're in the last month trying to gun it down. So make sure to subscribe because about 33% of people who watch my videos are not subscribed. So hopefully today's day that I do earn your subscription. Now, Ultimate Heraclinos here. I expected this to be bought out, honestly, by this point because of how popular Edison's going. As well as we have the Black Friday sale, which brings quite a few buyouts, but not as much this year. Well, mob play sold. That's it. Just one mob play this month. Um... A lot of people, so there's a lot of mob plays here, about 45, holding the line. Uh, personally, I would rather get lightly played for 75. I mean, if these mob plays come lightly played somehow, that's awesome. But we all know that's not going to happen. Lightly played, 75, 95. Over here near Mints, you got an Italian, you got Spanish, and then you have the Turo Pack PSA 10 for $1,500. Now, if this was like half that price, I would say that's not too bad. That's pretty good for a Ultimate Rare here, but... I would just grab these good condition ones while you can. I mean, really, you only have six, yeah, about six copies here that are in good quality, that are English. Last time I checked, there were nine. Uh, so I don't know if people took them off or what happened here. Uh, the Secret Earth from Gliders Assault, these look very nice as well. Now, you don't have to run three of these. Uh, I, some people say you only need to run one. I think you need to run two, right? Just just run two. First editions here, like, plays, 70 bucks here, 65 Near Mentor 72. Uh, not too bad for this card. Uh, Glider Beast Sam Knight here from Total Pack 1. Value plates are about 37, 46, going up to 55 for your Near Mints. In fact, Near Mints are quickly going up to the moon here for your copies. Then we have Glider Beast Laquari here, Turo Pack Booster 5. Uh, this is a super rare. $25 going up to 36. It's not really that bad. These were like 50s. Uh, funny enough, in fact, if we go a year, can we see that when they were 50? Roughly see when they were 50 here. Uh, and I thought that was really expensive for a super of this, so I told people to get rid of it. Uh, Secret Rares, though, which a lot of people like, honestly. Uh, these are about $3 here. Honestly, I think the Secret's absolutely gorgeous. I think this is actually... Pre I'd rather have... The Secret is so cheap, that and it has low quantities. I would rather accumulate, say... Whatever uh, $25 gets me of this card, you know, 8 copies, 9 copies, 10 copies, whatever, then get uh, the Turbo Pack one. Just because I think there's more money in this Secret Rare eventually going up, especially for the first editions here. Uh, and then that is it for the Mark Wash. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, smash that like button, subscribe. If you're buying any cards off TCG, please use my link down in the description below. Helps out the channel to know this will cost to you. As well as let me know what I'm going over in the next Market Watch. And I will see you guys in tomorrow's live stream at 10 p.m. Central. Peace.